there's probably an important place. Okay, I'd like to uh, call this meeting back to order. At this time, um, I'd like to call the Department of Research and Development to table. Thank you for joining us. If you can identify yourself for the record, and then you can. I am Don Bebe, I'm Deputy for Research and Development. Um, first, I just want to pay a little more acknowledgement to all my students. It's a pleasure for me to be here, but uh, it's nice to have it instead. Um, but I just want to say good morning, uh, Madam Chair, uh, and the rest of the council members. I just uh, give me this opportunity to speak to you today regarding the 2014 15 budget. I know you have a full schedule, so I'll try to keep this short and to the point. Um, our, our mission at Research and Development is to provide leadership, enhancing the quality of life, and sustainability of Hawaii Island communities through programs related to agriculture, energy, tourism, economic development, uh, community development, and so um, Our budget requested for approval this year uh, is $3,692,461. Um, it's up approximately uh, $171,000. $747, primarily due to the uh, transmedia program uh, that we are here in the last time, which would be uh, $200,000. Um, it's pretty much a status quo budget as far as the other um, programs are concerned. Uh, one point of interest I wanted to mention was that there, there is going to be a change in our OCE because we actually transferred um, health care to the research center uh, with a slight increase from like 50,000 to 5,000. Uh, we, we, we support, um, like I mentioned above, many industries, uh, including new business, STEM, healthcare, health care, and film. But our three major priorities are um, agriculture, tourism, and energy. Um, <coughs> in agriculture, uh, we, we, you know, we want to make significant significant commitment of around 660000 to support this industry. Uh, we try to help create education opportunities, build skills by supporting new farmer initiatives, uh, such as natural farming, and the Kohala Center's Kuwaiti Kamala program. Uh, it's for beginning farmer and rancher programs. Uh, we try to do help with invasive species by supporting efforts to control pests like uh, the coffee berry borer, uh, little fire ant, uh, coffee frogs. Uh, we also mean, want to maintain our commitment to support the soil and water conservation districts uh, by supporting them to provide, to continue to provide technical support and assistance in the development of conservation plans that preserve essential land and water resources. Um, that fund is approximately $300,000. Uh, for our goals, we also try to work uh, collaboratively uh, with existing public and private entities uh, in efforts to strengthen relationships uh, to create partnerships and share resources. Um, tourism is another big commitment that we want to make. Around 1.3 million uh, in this year's budget. Uh, of that, around 400,000 uh, would be coming from the Hawaii Tourism Authority's Product Enrichment uh, Program, uh, or CPAP, uh, which has, we just found out, is, has a commitment, commitment from the state to uh, end, to the end of 2015. Uh, with six out of the ten top employers associated to the travel industry program, uh, tourism industry, sorry, it plays a large part in our economy. This funding will allow us to support programs that are focused on our island uh, and support our communities in that industry. Uh, while, uh, I guess while uh, also complementing the efforts of the uh, With programs such as the, um, to enhance the arrival experience at the airports and piers, uh, like the uh, Hilo Hawaii Visitor Industry Association uh, and Destination Kona. Uh, local festivals like the Taste of the Range, the Old Coffee Festival, the uh, Kona Music Festival, just to name a few. Um, our biggest contract is uh, $550,000 uh, with the Big Island Visitors Bureau, or BIVB. This contract is intended to provide a diverse marketing program that supports our, in, our island's industry, our visitor's industry. Uh, they make sure they you know, they keep contacting and updating our area partners, such as Hawaii Air, Alaska Airlines, um, on what we're about. Uh, they, 
marketing our islands, conventions, and settings programs uh, to industry representatives and wholesalers. Uh, we, we market our island internationally to places like Japan, Korea, China, Europe, and the uh, We also develop domestic marketing strategies to cities like Chicago and Dallas. Uh, and finally, but not least, they also they market to our local company. Um, but for energy, uh, we're constantly striving to look for ways that we can assist our colony in making it more efficient, whether it's through renewable energy production, uh, implementing efficiencies, or charging for the consumer. We support the renewable world, efforts such as the Department of Water Supplies and Volume Urban Project and the World Rural National Society. We participated in dockets uh, such as the Agricole Home Project, uh, decoupling, and the integrated research plan. Uh, we look we look forward to supporting um, we're looking forward to supporting uh, <coughs> things like the uh, microgrid master RFP and the energy story research project at Delha. These are some types of efforts that we like to continue with your support. Um, so some of the other areas we support uh, is like film. Uh, we constantly try to market uh, our island to the industry. Um, both locally and abroad, uh, with like, the Hawaii Island Film Festival, Festival and the Inaloa Full Dome Festival. Uh, this, in 2013, we saw about $3 million in production compared to a state, of, state total of around 250 million. This is about 1.2%. Uh, we're hoping that we'd like to increase those numbers um, with continued support of like, these local festivals and, and programs that are tied to the dance of the program. Um, and we think that uh, there is still a lot of for both. Uh, in 2010, the film industry in the state was about 380 um, In our business development STEM, we were looking at to encourage the development of new technologies that can translate into uh, the education and our training of our local local workforce to support in industries like the astronomy. Um, things like the UH Applied Engineering Program or the Aerospace Training Center. Uh, healthcare, we, we we're looking to support um, by supporting efforts to connect people and services uh, in, in our underserved market. Um, let's see. Uh, as far as uh, and grant support, you know, we a group try to provide tools uh, to make information available for um, people and organizations uh, to apply for grants. Um, and one one issue I know is a source part of both for us and who I know is our staffing. We have several vacancies, um, but we've been trying to support those areas through temporary assignments or TAs or contract hires. And one <coughs> in particular is I specialist, but I just want to let you know that we've had a contract with this for the last year. And uh, all our vacancies are in various stages of being filled. Uh, we just as, I guess, as well as we can. Okay. That's it. Uh, no Thank you. Um, <coughs> oh, okay. I didn't see a light on. Sorry, Council Member Yao. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you for the presentation. I, um, I remember at the beginning of the budget last year. Um, somebody uh, of the council was hoping and asking that research and development would um, branch out a little bit more. And I see and I feel like in the last year or in the last few months, especially, there's been some really exciting projects coming on to your department. And I'm um, happy to say some of them are in District 8. I'm looking forward to working with you and those projects. <coughs> Thank you. Councilmember Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, good morning, Mr. Member. I just want to say thank you for your continued um, support for the for actually the Puna Music Festival. Um, I know your team has been doing a great job in supporting that in the district that I represent. You know, we have both the people that are there. I just want to say um, thank you for that effort. Continued effort. Yeah, that, that is a good 
Um, I am a strong <coughs> proponent on energy and also agriculture, and we touch into that um, a lot in R and D. And I just want to um, emphasize on the County of Hawaii Energy Sustainability Contract. It's one of your highlights. It's the five-year roadmap that outlines the highest priority actions in the county. And I believe Public Works has done the, um, or continue to do in here, is to replace the 1,000 low pressure LEDs, the street lamps, and that will help um, with the cost efficiency in the county of Hawaii. And as long as we keep doing these steps to improve and be cost effective, um, I feel like we will start save. We will start seeing those savings. So I just want to um, um, encourage you to keep continuing with that plan and um, follow up with the recommendations there. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'll do my best to try to support you in that path. Uh, the other part is agriculture. I know that um, there was a Hawaii County Food Self-Sufficiency Baseline Study. And I wanted to ask you because um, I actually, I did witness it. And I've seen it being encouraged around the community and how we can be more self-sustainable in our food and for our food source. And I just want to find out from you, is there any, um, any, any initiatives in your department trying to um, look into some ways we can be more self-sufficient in our agriculture and our food? We're, we're always trying to support um, the industry, especially in the sufficiency. I know there's there's efforts like in natural farming and, and whatnot. We try to support programs that you know bring up the technology. Uh, but we definitely are, we, we, we use that at the baseline as a helpful tool um, to try to support what we can. And try to think of what we can have for the bottom line. I'll definitely be in touch with you. Okay, yeah, please, because those are my two main priorities um, in R&D, and I hope that you continue to work on those programs. I, I, I want to say that your other programs have been very successful, and I, um, I don't have any questions for them. But I just want to point out that if you think of me, think of energy and agriculture. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Kern. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning. Good morning. Like the budget, like the guys uh, kept it pretty much right on right on track with a little bit of increase. Um, I support the increase. I think the uh, transmedia uh, accelerator program is just outstanding uh, concept of it. I look forward to see it getting on the ground and, uh, and uh, just morphing into what it's going to morph into. Um, very, very exciting. I, I love the, uh, the priorities you guys have, and I'm right on point with that. I think an important area of um, the, just to understand, and I think you guys know, is that the return on investment for, from research and development is great, what it brings to our island through ag, through tourism, through something like the Transmedia um, Accelerator Program. It's, uh, it's big. And I um, just really appreciate what you guys do, and uh, I'm happy to hear that you guys are working on it. Uh, getting all the positions filled. And I also think it's very important to fill those positions with the right type of folks because it, it's a certain type of mindset that goes into R and D and into this um, this department to really get that that bang for the buck and that thinking outside of the box um, type of approach. So um, I support you guys, you guys are a great fun. Thank Thanks. you, yeah. I mean we're really excited for the guys with the program. Very Thank you very much. Um, Council Member Boyd. Thank you. I'm on page two seventy six in the yellow book. Um, under, I'm, I'm going to concentrate mostly on two areas, but let me start with a little bit of the agriculture. Your second bullet point on access to support and strengthen new and existing agricultural industry organizations as coordinating bodies for collaborative agricultural advocacy. How are you doing now? Um, well, we're trying to 
how to support, support the, the programs that are already out there, like the uh, floral culture. The what? The floral Can you get, get the microphone oh, I'm sorry. We, we try to support the, the organizations that are out there. Um, we have, we have um, Try to look for um, uh, new innovative businesses that we can support to help try to increase uh, the industry. Um, businesses? Like, well, not businesses, but like efforts, like education and natural farming. I mean, that's kind of like the, the new up and coming, uh, which is really interesting. Um, we've had um, uh, a value added RFP that was in that we partnered with the state that we recently issued um, that. Is looking for uh, basically value added. I think there's three. Um, I think in Puna, Kamakura, and I believe one, one in Kona, I think. Uh, as far as um, the efforts to to add value to agricultural products. And, um, uh, let's see. I, I frankly don't see how that fits into the second bullet point. Oh, I'm sorry. You're supporting and strengthening new and existing agricultural industry organizations as coordinating bodies. So the organizations are the coordinating bodies for collaborative agricultural advocacy. I, there's nothing in here that I see in this document that explains what that is or how you're doing it. There's a lot of nice words in here. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, let me go on. Okay. I'm, I'm, done, I'm, not, I'm going to let you off the hook on this one. I'm going to go through it. Okay, then it says, um, <clears throat> under energy, optimize the integration of renewable energy, energy efficiency, and economic development in Hawaii Island. I absolutely support that. I'm glad you're working on it. And I would like to talk about energy for just a second. Okay. <clears throat> you and your page 287, you've got your program of objectives. And I know you're working with Public Works to expand solar on our buildings, our county buildings, to get our costs. We're the biggest user of electricity in the county. But I would like to, and, and then number five says, facilitate two projects in research and development deployment by June 2015. What two projects are you going to be doing? Have they been selected yet? Um. And we're, there is, um, let's see, I'm trying to think. Um, and we're trying to do a, um, like a, what we call a master RFP project that'll take a look at our, our common facilities and try to see, one, if they can take renewable energy, and then two, which one should and how much. Okay. Uh, that's, that's good. But so they're more related to the county's energy issues. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's good. No, absolutely support that. We got to get that bill down. Okay. That's no problem. Um, I would like to make a suggestion. Now you guys can research grants, right? <clears throat> uh, let me give you a little quick background on me. I kind of um, I worked on a nonprofit. We received a federal grant um, to put 100 units of um, solar water into low-income homes. What we found out when we tried to do this project is the only people who could uh, do this, because you have to pay part of the cost, um, is that people who were truly low income either had terrible credit, couldn't get a loan for that half cost, or they had, they were low income and had fabulous credit and refused to take out a loan because they didn't want any debt. As a result of this, the only people who applied and were successfully um, qualified were high-income people. They got a huge discount on their solar water heater system. It was a, a very big frustration, and we reported this to the federal government. This is what's going on. And so, as far as we were consumed, concerned, the trial was successful, and we completely failed in reaching the target group of people. When I look through <coughs> what we're doing as a county, <coughs> and I look at low-income housing, the people who are paying huge electric bills and cannot afford to put in solar water heating or all, all house um, solar systems um, are the low-income people. So they have to rent someplace, 
and the water heater is the biz biggest expense in the house. And so they're paying these enormous electrical bills to, to heat their, the water, and they lose that money as discretionary money or be able to put food on the table or whatever. I would really like to see your department take a step forward in this area by working with the Department of Housing and locating low-income housing where the owner of the housing is either state, county, that would be fine, or a private apartment owner that would allow us to maybe take grant money and put in solar water heating in those units so that those people's uh, electric bill drops, what I think it's like 30 or 40 percent on the solar water heater. We need to try a pilot project. I, I heard the, the deal, I'll, I'll be done just a second. Um, I'd like to see us as a county working to do a pilot project on rental units, especially if they're privately owned, where the landlord's not going to make any money. It's only going to help the tenants, but it's going to help our low-income people have a little bit more discretionary money. I would like to see that type of project go forward, if you can possibly get a grant or something like that. Um, so that's all I want to say on that issue. So I'm going to yield. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, uh, before anybody else, uh, before we get a second half, okay, uh, Council Member Woody. Hi. Um, I'm upset that Laverne isn't here. Um, I think that's really too bad that she didn't arrange her schedule to be here for this. I mean, and it just a number of times where I've sought to meet with her, and she's often not available. Um, and to be available, and then you're there, or Jeff's there, and not present. Um, how, what are the staff that you're missing right now, and how long have they been missing? Um, <coughs> uh, the, the, ag, the ag position. Um, we have the, um, and how long has that position been missed out, vacant? For, for, um, without being covered by a contractor, or just the Just out, uh, yeah. It's like years, right? Yeah. And I think that was Dida's position, yes, was that her right. position? And I think she gave six months notice that she was leaving. Anyway, so it's a long time. I don't want to. Yeah, yeah, it's long. And then are there other positions that are missing, that are vacant, or unfunded? Uh, yeah, well, we have several unfunded, but vacant. Um, we have our librarian position. Uh, July 2013. Our film commissioner, which is uh, December 13. Uh, and our resource specialist is November. Um, okay, I just, you know, I, I've been critical of your department for many years, so I continue to be. Um, and I think, I, I think a number of years ago I was, um, this is before you're there, so I just want to, in terms of finding grants for people, not just doing economic development for individual entities, but um, the way that the grants are handled. Um, in other words, sending out these long lists of, to different department heads and expecting them to be able to go through them. Um, I, I just feel that it, looking at the different counties, I believe that we're doing an inadequate job in terms of identifying potential grants. And I really look at you all. I, I think one, again, before you, but I brought in to your office like 10 different grants that I thought we could be doing immediately that we were good on. And it was sort of, and one was like 900,000 uh, emergency preparedness. Um, so I, I feel that that area is just, I guess that would probably be one of those positions that's unfunded, I think that's there, but I don't feel that that's, anyway, I really feel that that's lacking. The other thing just in terms of ag, and this is before I got on to, into this position, 
you know, I was attending all the county, for the county <coughs> plan, I went to maybe five of those different meetings. And um, it just, that plan just sat there and doesn't, in my view, doesn't get implemented, or the Hamakua Ag Plan, um, they sort of get on a shelf. And um, I think one of the things that I came out of that, working through those, all those many community meetings I went to, was that the concern over the little red fire ant. And I kept getting told, okay, well, that's a state thing, Margaret, that's a state thing. I said, well, at this point, all these different farmers are saying we're going to, things are going to fall apart if we don't do that. So I worked on a county resolution with specific points of what the county could do, what we could do, and worked to, with Nancy Redfeather, people all over the county, was this through Pete Hoffman, got it passed. Basically, nothing was done. Oh, it's this big one, you know, it would be your department. Nothing was done on that. Since I came in here, I had sort of a follow-up what's happened on that and with Jeff Melrose and he said, well really, you know, we've done a little and now we have, but we know we haven't implemented any of these things. So, um, I also feel, I mean, Ag, that's my committee, Ag, Water, Energy, Sustainability, and I've gone to you many times, I really want to coordinate, I want to know what you all are doing, and if anything, I feel that there's like this gap, you know, um, I asked, or even representatives on this mayor's new advisory committee, and they said, well, they were told by your department not to communicate directly to us. Um, so I feel this all this collaborate, um, at least to me, and chair of this co committee, is I'm always out there trying, how can we meet, how can we meet, whether it's on Bill 13, it's, you know, like this distance. I mean, if anything, it's, I feel, I feel treated as an adversary, so I just, you know, that's how I feel. And, um, you know, all this coordinating bodies collaborating, I ask, can you possibly schedule some of those meetings when it's not on a Tuesday or Wednesday when I've got this? Every one of them is Tuesday or Wednesday. So, um, and I do think just in terms of information gathering, part of it to me is like that, is that that's really important, that research and development, not just you know, picking different different groups. I'm going to finish up in a second. I look at, say, one of your groups, Hilo Hamakua Community Development Corporation. I know it's in my pal Val's district, but I've been to some of those. I have friends that have worked on there, and they're off on, you know, how do we promote GMOs? How do we do these things contrary to the county? Um, so I just, you know, I just feel that really want to work on that collaboration cooperation and not where I'm always coming to you for information and I'm saying, okay, I really want to know everything you're doing in that and how I can do things and what we can do together. So I, you know, I, I, and it's before you came in there, um, same old, I tried to, when the Charter Commission came up, I tried to do, let's do a department of that. The response was, that's more money for another department. We're going to really focus in here in this department. We don't even fill that position. Anyway, I'll stop. I know I'm complaining again, but um, it's an important area to me. And, and um, it's not personal. It's just looking at all, all, starting with all the grants that I think we really could be looking at and, and maybe doing more of that and filling this position. Thank you. Um, well, thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to say it's a it's a little unfair to say that um, Miss Glover and Omori isn't here, you know, for that she couldn't arrange her schedule to be here. I'm sure there's she would have liked to be here if possible, but I'm sure there's certain certain circumstances that may not have allowed her to be here. But I just want to mention that. But thank you, uh, Don, for representing. I just want to go into a little bit ask you a question about the. The Koki Frog Sprayer Program. I know you've added um, five thousand. I think is the budgeted item. I know I can ask you later on about it, but now that I'm here and I can remember it, uh, can you explain a little bit about that program and you know how how well it's going? You know, I've been getting a lot of complaints, especially in Kona, you know, about the expansion of the Koki Frogs. It's it's expanding ever rapidly, and we just, the, the, the people, the 
my constituents, you know, want to know like how um, the county can help help out in in any way possible to make sure that it doesn't expand, you know, take over the whole district. Because I know it's it's been all it's been spreading rapidly around the island, but it, it it might seem you know that we've completely almost given up on this <coughs> program. But just can you um, go into yeah. a little bit about it? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, the the, the, the funding for that program actually we were kind of kind of actually thinking of taking it out but we um, but when we took an inventory of our equipment um, they're getting kind of old I believe they're you know, 10 if not more years old so that's more for the maintenance and repair of the, of the sprayers that are out there so it's still it's, a, it's still a program um, in fact there's a, a few engineers that work right now that we've got to repair uh, but it's still a program that uh, uh, people can come in and, and, and borrow and use um, and, and along with that, um, we actually instituted uh, like a subsidizing program to kind of help alleviate the cost of the citric acid. Uh, so it's it's like um, it's through the eight CEOs and uh, crop production services. So what happens is you do that, and it's about comes up to a little over a dollar a pound. I think norm, I think the regular price is almost two or if not more. So you could go down and you would have to buy a certificate from HCLC, you could have to crop that to services and pick up the So that's kind of how the program uh, is working. And it, 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 was a, it was a small grant, and it was, you know, hopefully it would be revolving until the funds run out. Okay, because there's a few groups that, you know, they want to um, go around and spray, and I want to introduce them to whoever possible to get the information out there and how they can get, yeah. um, you know, certain funding or grants or whatever it is because you know we definitely don't want it to I mean there's a lot of areas still within Kona I know especially that um, we don't have the, the Koki frog and um, just want to make sure that okay just want to make sure that um, they know where they can get the funds and um, know where the sprayers are um, are the sprayers uh, Located where? Where can where where would the? Um, actually, if they can contact our office, okay. and then we can put in touch with which is the closest one or the best one because there are different ones too, um, like 100 gallon and 400 gallon and high pressure and not high pressure. So we can actually talk to them and figure out which one and which actually best fit. Yeah, and it's in, and and I um I know it's difficult you know for these teams to go into private property and that's that's a, a, another big issue that we're all having yeah. with not only the Kolki but the the. Uh, coffee berry borer beetle and I'm sure a lot of other things that private property you know uh, won't allow anybody to do but but just uh, thank you for that and uh, hopefully anybody who listens to this will also know that they can go to YouTube for information. Sure. Councilmember Wishmore. Thank you Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Kunoha actually um, made me a little curious now as far as the coking frog situation. So Mr. Mende um, you mentioned HCLC uh, is helping with the distribution of the citric acid. Well, actually, they're they're um, they're a different contract. Right? Yeah. So what what they do is it's they the citric acid is housed in crop production services. So what they do is through their rainbow their store that they have out there um, that people put on their purchase a uh, uh, certificate from them, and then they go down and pick up that just to transfer from. Okay, and that was something that Ms. Poindexter had helped with too. With her. Okay. Can I just answer that? The the money that I gave through my contingency funds was targeted for like the Waimea and Hamakua area, so those people do not need to pay for those because it came out of my contingency fund. And getting a private property, they they didn't really have a problem because a lot of it was commu a community effort on doing that. So it was going through that community group. And um, thank you to HCOC who made it possible to be uh, to facilitate <coughs> that whole process. Just to refresh my memory, this budget, how much did you do? Well, I gave 2,500, I think, to start off with, and then which buys them a lot, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I think it would last like six to eight months or something to get it out there, and they still have a lot of it left. So, so, so for um, this point, this program was that they would. Get, they could, for whoever she wanted to, she would have, you know, they could pick up the vouchers in a total of 2500 So I think, believe, I think it helped two different um, 
mean it spoke to them. And then they would take that and then go down to uh, contact your services and pick up those accidents. So notwithstanding what's what's happening with um, this one next district, other um, members of the public are, are free to go down and purchase mm -hmm. yeah. at the okay. So that's a program that uh, R and D um, is still currently supporting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we, we we gave them a small grant and hopefully they get subsidized so with uh, one dollar. I think they're charging one dollar plus five dollars for So and then so hopefully eventually the the money's gonna run out because the two taxes cost more than that. So it's just a sum of the program. So hopefully it lasts for hopefully a couple years. Just, just food for thought from my, my perspective, I think this is something we should continue uh, to support. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm just considering you know, doing additional uh, uh, funding maybe for uh, next budget because uh, to me, this will never be over, but it's just a matter of, I guess, controlling yeah. at this point. Um, I remember some of our state legislators you know, promising to win, but I don't think we can win anymore. We just gotta maintain or hold them off, so to speak, right? Yeah. Uh, as with any invasive species, I think you know, we all have an interest in this. Um, fire ants and, and you know, we don't uh, want any of these things to go out of control. So I just wanted to get an update on that. You know, it's something that uh, you know, we, we just see it expanding, like Mr. Kuno was talking about. So instead of uh, lessening it, you know, we, as, I think, as a county, we just need to uh, use additional resources you know, that the state uh, basically, uh, what's delicately put it now, they just stop doing it, you know, and funding it. That's the reality of it. While well, we are oftentimes uh, left holding the bag, so to speak, um, I guess that's our, not I guess, I know that's our duty because uh, I don't think we have a choice. But I want to thank uh, you, Mr. Mende, um, for your efforts. Uh, this I would encourage to encourage the department to continue the coping problem program as well as uh, um, other invasive species. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Eladan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Regarding the fire ants, I believe Councilmember Onishi um, was that since he's our HSAC representative, he goes to the state a lot, and he's been advocating for the fire ants. And I believe there is a bill that's going through the state that will fund around three hundred thousand for parks and rec to funnel through that um, through that, administ that administration, and um, so that's actually going on and that is very hopeful to get that funding here. So to have that control measures, that is happening. I also felt earlier that there was some unfair criticism to your department. I mean, first, um, someone stated that department goals to support strengthening new and existing agriculture industry organizations as coordinating bodies for collaborative agriculture advocacy, that you're not meeting these goals. And the thing is, you are. For for the public to have both sides, the um, your department has been support. I mean, it's highlighted on page 279. You support three farmer education initiatives: one in Hamakua, the Kohala Center; one in Waimea with the Waimea Homesteader Association; and one with the Hilo Hamakua Community Development Corporation. That's working collaboratively with existing agriculture industry organizations. There's also others on the business development side that is supporting that, the Enterprise Zone program, that's currently helping agriculture industries to put, to leave money where they would otherwise pay into the state for their sales tax, that would save them because they don't have to pay it, enrolling into the Enterprise Zone program. Another part is on page 91, you have, um, you have, community-based organizations for capacity building projects such as organization development, neighborhood, and food, or local food production, and promotion of made on Hawaii Island product directory. That's supporting ag. So I felt it was unfair to mention that you're not um, doing the goals that you put upon yourself. You are meeting those goals. And then you, someone mentioned about the grants. You have Beth, who's the one specialist who actually helps out other departments. I redirected um, the community officers from my district to talk to Beth, and they help them out. You might, might not see it directly into the budget, but indirectly, 
other people from different departments are getting grants because of her expertise. Uh, the other part was, um, there's, there's actually a lot more I could keep on saying, but your department is doing an outstanding job in supporting the community in agriculture. And I, I want to say, um, I support you in your budget and also your programs that you um, put up. And when someone mentioned about information gathering, that you're not doing it, you just did the Hawaii the um, self-sufficiency baseline study. That's all the information gathering of the county of Hawaii. The energy um, sustainable, um, the energy, what is it called? Energy sustainability program, that's information gathering. So you have done your job, and I am supporting your budget. Thank you. Thank you. If you had this, my point is if you had the staff that's there and filled, they would be able to accomplish a great deal okay. more. You don't have to come back okay. and. Okay, and, that, that's what I don't want to start doing. Okay. I don't want to start. So, right. But I, my point, point is not that you're doing bad, it's just that this position has been open, it wouldn't be. And um, and let me just say, I think we're doing, I mean, there's some acquisition <coughs> in the tax and finance. I feel we could be doing much more. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Um, okay, promise not to go back and forth on arguing a point because everybody has their right to their opinion and we just need to respect every, everyone's uh, right to their opinion. So, Council Member, I am not going to be arguing a point. I just want to relay some facts. The real property, they were trying to get an ag specialist, and it's still an open spot. But the reason why is finding qualified individuals to meet that position. You can't just put any Joe into that position. You want to have quality people. I would rather you take the time to go through the applications and find a qualified person. The, the fact that you're actually sitting them down and making sure that they meet those qualifications is more important than rushing in and filling that position right away. And I know you Excuse have interviewed me. a lot of people. Point of order. Point of order. In, you're pontificating, you're not asking any questions, and we need to move on. Thank you. I'm stating some facts. You are pontificating. Thank you. I'm stating facts. Okay, if we can stick to, um, let's all look at what they're coming to uh, share with us on their budget and how we can get better information from them to help them uh, push their budget through or if some of the things you feel may not be, so we're here to listen to that and then thank you for coming to uh, give us all this information and uh, allowing <coughs> us to have this, this discussion with you. So, in, in closing, I just like to say I'd like to thank you um, because when you came to my our community when um, I first got elected and we went uh, to the Hamakua community, um, people came from Waimea, Hamakua, Kalalakoi, um, <coughs> and they talked about the koki frog and they talked about how can we purchase something cheaper because it was getting so expensive for them. I don't know if you remember that that uh, conversation. And I want to thank R&D because what they did is they went out to uh, find an agency that could host this purchasing power agreement so that we could purchase cheaper, um, uh, what was that at the, the nut line, what, what did they call it? Citric acid. So with the contingency fund one, we could even get more uh, citric acid because we had the purchasing power of, um, through R&D's efforts. And I think when we talk about um, bullet point two on agriculture, on the support and strengthening new and existing agriculture, when you talk about collaborative agricultural advocacy, I see it as improving access to healthy fresh food and supporting local farmers and economics through healthy food initiatives. That's what I wrote down when I saw that statement, I kind of tried to write it out on 
what you meant by that because you are doing that because I, I know because I've been working with a couple new farmers wanting to do natural farming who came and sit down uh, with R&D um, and thank you for that to help us with our, our efforts and how do we get this out there and, and look at more help being able to offer more healthy fresh food and those initiatives. So I want to say thank you for that. Um, uh, and I just want to comment on the grants. I understand sometimes, because I, I was a grant writer, so I understand how difficult it is sometimes with one department to try and handle all the grants, because somebody has to manage those grants. Mani writing the grants is, I, it's, it's not that easy, but it's the easiest part. You know, it's managing the grants that is very, very difficult. Um, and so when you're looking at a 900,000 emergency preparedness civil defense grant, I don't feel it should go through R&D, but anyway, so I'll uh, thank you for all your efforts, um, R&D, and I feel it's a, you have a lot going on, and I just want to say thank you, and if any of the other council members have further questions, uh, they will be able to contact you better. Sure. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Aloha. I'm going to forge ahead if any... Uh, do we want to take a break or do we want to keep going? Because